Hi there. I want to do four questions with you on percentage peak flow and I want to show you how to do it both with and without a calculator. So jumping into the first question we are told a patient's predicted peak flow is 600 litres per minute. However his current peak flow is 450 litres per minute. Calculate his current peak flow as a percentage of his predicted peak flow. Now this really is just a comparison question. We are asked to compare the current peak flow value with the predicted peak flow value. But we need to express that comparison as a percentage. So I propose we use a formula. Here it is, current peak flow over predicted peak flow times 100. In other words, that comparison of the current and predicted we're expressing as a fraction. And then to turn any fraction into a percent, we multiply by 100. So let's use that formula to unpack the question. Well, from this question, the current peak flow is 450. I'm not going to write down units because both units are litres per minute and they don't come into our consideration. The predicted peak flow is 600. And then we must multiply by 100. Now I'm going to write it as 100 over 1 so that I have the appearance of a fraction times a fraction. It's just to stop me making a mistake and multiplying both numbers by 100. OK, let's look at that fraction first. Can we simplify it? Well, yes, we can. They both end in zeros. So we can divide by 10. We can cancel out the zeros. Then you should hopefully spot that 5 goes into both 45 and 60. Well, 5 goes into 45 9 times, and 5 goes into 60 12 times. So we are simplifying that question right down. Well, can we simplify any more? Well, yes, we can. 3 goes into both 9 and 12. 3 goes into 9 3 times, and 3 goes into 12 4 times. So now that we've used the formula to unpack the question and we've simplified our numbers right down, we can now do top times top, bottom times bottom. Well, 3 times 100 is 300. 4 times 1 is 4. Well, that simplifies down also. I can have top and bottom to give 150 over 2. And I can halve it again because 150 and 2 are both even, so half of 150 is 75 and half of 2 is 1. In other words, our answer is 75%. Because recall, every time you see a fraction over 1, you can just ignore that over 1 part. OK, that was straightforward. Let's check that all with the calculator. So turn it on and clear the memory. We had 450 over 600 times 100, or as I called it, times 100 over 1. We don't need to do any simplifying, we can just directly put those numbers into the calculator. 450 divide by 600 times by 100. I can divide by 1 if I want, but I don't need to. And the answer is, as we saw, 75%. Good stuff. On to the next one. Question 2. A patient's predicted peak flow is 500 litres per minute and their current peak flow is 410 litres per minute. Calculate his current peak flow as a percentage of predicted peak flow. So once again, we're going to be guided by the formula and we're going to unpack the question using the formula. So, notice how in the question they want the current peak flow first. So I write down 410 over 500 and let's not forget the times by 100 which I'm going to put over 1 just for later on and again I'm looking for opportunities to simplify that fraction initially they both end in a naught again so I can divide by 10 and then that's as far as I can go 41 and 50 have no common factors so I can't do any more simplifying so on to the next step top times top well 41 times 100 it's just 4100, 0, 0, 4100. 50 times 1 is just 50. Well, now we can continue because what we can continue to do is to simplify. Again, this happens to end in 0, so divide by 10, and I'm left with 410 divided by 5. Now, you know that when I see fractions like this, 
I always imagine if I need to evaluate the fraction itself, literally pushing over the fraction, just so I know how my calculation will look thereafter. So I need to do the calculation 5 into 410. Well, 5 doesn't go into 4. 5 goes into 41 8 times, remainder 1. And then 5 into 10 is 2. So that came out to be an exact answer, and that exact answer was 82%. Notice I'm thinking about units here, the unit is the percentage sign. Only slightly trickier than question 1, but we do have to keep our wits about us. Let's check with the calculator, clear the memory. Now when I unpacked the question with the formula, I had 410 divided by 500 multiplied by 100 divided by 1 and sure enough our answer comes out to be 82 percent good stuff on to question three a patient's predicted peak flow is 640 liters per minute however the current peak flow is 560 liters per minute calculate the current peak flow as a percentage of the predicted peak flow and now they've added the extra part which says round your answer if required to the nearest whole number so we'll keep that in mind i'm suspecting here that the answer is not going to be a nice whole number but let's let's proceed as before we have our formula in mind and we use that formula to unpack the question reading the question carefully the current peak flow is 560. the predicted peak flow is 640. i'll be multiplying by 100 over 1. Okay, can we simplify that fraction? As before, we can just cross off those zeros. We're dividing top and bottom by 10. We can go a little bit further because both 56 and 64 are even numbers. Now, half of 56 is 28. If you weren't so sure, you just work out 2 into 56. If you're ever not sure, use pen and paper to work it out. 2 into 5 is 2, remainder 1. And 2 into 16 is 8. So sure enough, half of 56 was 28, and half of 64 is 32. Not forgetting my times 100 over 1 for later. Just make some more space. Now 28 and 32 are still both even, so I can half top and bottom. I can do this part in my head. A half of 28 is 14, a half of 32 is 16. I can have one more time, I end up with 7 over 8. I've halved top and bottom yet again. And now this is as far as I can go with my simplifying. Now let's multiply the two fractions. Top times top, bottom times bottom. Well 7 times 100 is just 700. 8 times 1 is just 8. I can simplify it a little bit, I can just halve top and bottom. 350 over 4, and in fact I can halve it one more time, 1, 7, 5 over 2. I now need to push over that fraction, carry out the calculation. I'm doing 2 into 175. 2 into 1 doesn't go. 2 into 17, well that goes 8 times, which takes me to 16, remainder 1. 2 into 15, well that's 7 times remainder 1. And now, for the first time, below that line, when you have remainder by itself, you must go decimal, top and bottom, and add a zero. So we can now say 2 into 10 is 5. Our answer is 87.5%. However, they did say, round your answer to the nearest whole number. So I'm going to write my answer as... 88% because I know the rules of rounding are if it's 5 and above you round up. Now if you're thinking to yourself well I would have stopped at the 350 over 4 stage that's absolutely fine. Let me show you. If I imagine pushing that over we know we're going to be working out 4 into 350 well, 4 into 3 doesn't go 4 8 to 32 so that's 8 remainder 3 
and 4 goes into 30, 7 times which takes me to 28, with 2 remainder. The remainder by itself, so I'll put a decimal, top and bottom, add a 0, 4 into 20 is 5. I do end up with the same value. My habit usually is simplify as much as possible, because if I'm doing it pen and paper, I don't want to run the risk of making a mistake. But let's check with the calculator, and this will be straightforward. Clear the memory. So when I unpacked the question, I had 560 divided by 640 multiplied by 100 divided by 1. And sure enough, the answer is 87.5. The calculator gives the correct decimal answer, but we need to do something more with that, merely because of that last line. If it hadn't asked me to round, I might very well have left my answer as 87.5%. But don't forget those units. OK, on to the final question. Question 4. A patient's predicted peak flow is 550 litres per minute. The current peak flow is 400 litres per minute. Calculate the current peak flow as a percentage of the predicted peak flow. Round your answer, if required, to the nearest whole number. OK, I'll keep that in mind. I'm thinking about my formula and I want to find the current peak flow first, well the current peak flow is 400, my predicted peak flow is 550, and to complete the formula I'm going to multiply by 100 over 1, and then I'm going to look for opportunities to simplify. Well as the last few times the numbers have started off quite kindly and end in zero, so cross off a knot, top and bottom. There's another easy simplification I can do which is divide top and bottom by 5. Well, 5 goes into 40 8 times, and 5 goes into 55 11 times. So I end up with 8 over 11 multiplied by 100 over 1. Now I cannot simplify any more than that, so I will now do top times top, which is 800, over bottom times bottom, which is 11. I cannot simplify that, so again I imagine in my mind's eye pushing it over and I'm going to do 11 into 800. Now the 11 times table is very easy. It goes 11, 22, 33, 44, etc. 11 to 8 doesn't go, but into 80 it goes 7 times, which takes me to 77, which means there'll be a remainder of 3. And then 11 into 30, well that's twice. Two 11s are 22, so I must have remainder 8. Now I have a remainder by itself, but I know what to do then. I go decimal, top and bottom, and add a zero. 11 into 80, we've already seen that, it's a 7 times remainder 3. Now I could continue, or I could recognise I now have all the information I need. I was told to round my answer to the nearest whole number, so I can now do that rounding, and that rounds obviously to 73 percent. But just out of interest, if I had kept that division going, because I had a remainder 3 still, I would have added another naught and just kept going. 11 into 30 is 2, remainder 8. Add a naught. 11 into 80 is 7, remainder 3. And you can see that there's a repeating pattern. It is called a recurring decimal but it's a recurring pattern. My answer would be, on a calculator, we suspect, 72.727272, etc. I didn't need to worry about any of that, because as soon as I got to a level of precision that I was interested in, and that is one decimal place, I just stopped. I had enough information to say I can round at that point. That was slightly trickier, but let's double check one more time with the calculator. Play my memory. When I unpacked the question, I had 400 divide by 550, multiply by 100, divide by 1. And sure enough, the calculator does give that repeated pattern of 72.7272, etc., which does round to 73%. If they hadn't asked for rounding, I'm not sure what I would have done there. I might have given it to one decimal place, perhaps 72.7%. Generally speaking, in the question, they will give you some guidance. If you are expecting a whole number and you get a decimal, then that's often a clue that you have made a mistake. But here, as the questions have gone on, we've seen that our answers have become a little bit more challenging 
and particularly with that point about rounding that alerted us to a slightly more ambitious answer. Be that as it may, hopefully you'll realise that with a calculator this is a very straightforward question to do. You just put in the current peak flow value, divide it by the predicted peak flow value and multiply it by 100. Very important to get those numbers the right way around. The current peak flow has got to be put in first. And rather sneakily, they've actually given us the predicted peak flow first and the current peak flow second. So we do have to have our wits about us. Well, that's it for me. Thanks for watching.